Republican. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, for example, children as young as seven work the mines. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. So your magic. Hey Cub, what's up? I'm Brooklyn. Today we're going to talk about capitalism and witchcraft. And joining us today, we have... I'm Danny the Love Doula. Uh, my sun and moon are in Sagittarius and my rising is Cancer. So I am a self-love doula and that is assisting with emotional support and spiritual rebirth, sometimes just anything really in life that you want that a little bit boost of love and support and knowing you're just supported in yourself and mm -hmm. you get to give guidance with others i'm witch mama um my sun is aquarius my moon is sagittarius and my rising is leo obviously and <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i'm really excited to be here for episode three so today our episode is about witchcraft and capitalism, which is so loaded. Um, you know, it's just, it's a very heavy topic. There are so many things that we want to talk about that we're really excited about today. But first and foremost, um, for those who don't know, and I think it's really good to remember, reiterate, regenerate, think about it, is the idea of what is capitalism. And I wrote it down, you can Google it, and this is quite literally the definition it is an economic and political system in which a country's trade and industry are controlled by private owners for profit rather than by state. Um, so capitalism, witchcraft, the idea of accepting money for goods of some type from a private person. I wanted to talk about first is metaphysical shops or resources that cost us money that we're consuming from, especially here in Atlanta. Like, what are some that you guys really loved? What are some that you may not have loved? I don't know. Yours. <laughs> <laughs> not even. You didn't love it? No, I loved No, no, no. I loved it. Sorry. No, obviously, that sounds like incredibly biased of me to say, but I really did appreciate like the, having the not. I mean, ATL craft is still a thing, but because I'm in Midtown every day, I'm a little selfish. And so it was nice to just be able to pop in and be oh, there. Yeah. So the fourth ward area, too. It's such mm -hmm. a cute area. But I liked the the vibe of it. I liked that it was very clearly like witchcraft tools available and classes. Um, but again, I'm biased because I'm a witch. So I'm biased because <laughs> I owned ATL craft and own it. But yeah, we and I know that you also came so many times. That's how we know each other. Yeah, yeah, that's how we all yeah. Met. ATL craft. So. Essentially, my I worked at Youngblood for those true AT aliens. Um, Youngblood was a originally owned by two incredible women who really believed in locally sourcing Atlanta art. And back in 2006, very, very long time, ages ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked for them and I really was inspired by it. And when I created ATL Craft, I really wanted a space that really reflected local work, local and ethically made magical products. That was our, that was what we wanted. That's what we wanted more than anything. Mm -hmm. And I have a degree in nonprofit management. So community organization was is something that's incredibly important to me um so we put together this amazing space we were there for two years it was incredible um we got to know each other we we tried to create a space that people could come and meditate if they wanted they wanted to come and read with their friends they could you mm -hmm. know um it was very open to the public and then i quickly learned that capitalism was a part of it <laughs> Yeah. What about you, metaphysical spaces? So, for the most part, um, in Georgia, uh, Atlanta ATL Craft and Modern Mystic, mm -hmm. and both. Yeah. Like, um, I have love for both, and it's very different vibes. Yeah, <laughs> very different. Of like more of the sit down and like, I felt more of the I have a community. Like walking into ATL Craft, of it wasn't just like oh I can buy crystals and like I can also like 
sit down and like you said read of like many times bringing in friends of like hey let's go read cards and just like really get to enjoy and celebrate each other in our own ways mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's one out here too phoenix and dragon have mm -hmm. you been to that one that's yeah. been around for yeah that's that's a classic there, How it's long a has classic that been space here? i just found it because i moved mean out here. to be completely honest i don't know how long yeah it's been a while and they offer classes yeah they're they incredible have. um but also one has to come into question and we will talk about later yeah. is like where all of those progs are coming yep. from it's a huge space has a lot of cool things mm -hmm. um but where are they coming from mm -hmm. you know uh i think one thing that atl craft offered and also modern mystic also um haven't been there in a long very long time but has also offered in the past uh like you know some more local the idea of locally yeah. sourced yeah. things or ethically sourced things you yeah know, magical products when you're using stuff for magic you want it to have the best intention you don't want it to come from any type of child labor or slavery or anything like that and i think we in this day and age have that choice yeah because i make that choice talking on like things that we liked and disliked about places um and this is just in general speaking um and i like that i've seen um it's so like Modern Mystic at first for me, I I liked it, but it, it just didn't, I didn't feel like I fit in that demographic at first. And I will give her a lot of credit that I've gone in recently and like the employees are totally different. It's like very diverse now. Um, and I noticed like a lot of locally sourced stuff that I didn't really notice before maybe I just wasn't looking but one thing that really did stick out to me so I do want to give her credit there because that was something that bothered me is that it's more diverse and I don't know for me like we were talking about before we started filming um being able to see someone that kind of you feel like looks like you or represents you makes you feel like you belong a little more um but uh just wanted to throw that in there because I really did appreciate that but things that I uh, don't or that I do like about a lot of these metaphysical shops is the classes that are offered. Uh, most of the people seem very well informed and helpful. Uh, when I first was getting started going into ATL craft or not first getting started, but when I was like finally like, all right, if I'm going to do this, I need to take it seriously and I need to read, learn, research, ask questions. So I appreciated getting to go into these shops and ask a fuck ton of questions and not feel like I'm annoying maybe I was annoying some of them I don't know but I didn't feel like I was I felt like I was learning and I appreciated that it was a one-stop shop for resources as I was beginning my craft because I feel like when you first start you're like bombarded with tumblr pages and pinterest pages of like all these things and it can be intimidating because you're like do I need all these tools which I'm, we'll get into um, and then the things I didn't like the main thing now after doing research for this is I really, really wish that citations were posted either on the website or whatever of where the fuck they get crystals and where the fuck, though, if you went to a mining show, where did they get crystals? Like I want now I want to be able to like how I can go into Whole Foods and see what step meat <laughs> or whatever I'm getting. Absolutely. I need I need nutritional facts on my crystals in my yeah. Palo Santo. That's what I need now. For sure. Absolutely. I think one thing that we need to make very clear when it comes to witchcraft is all you need is you. Yep. Mm -hmm. All you need is you. And one thing that I really appreciate about a co Comedos, who has been here in we stand. Uh, episode one, um, is that she told me, well, told us in a class, like back in the day, people who, black people who just came over here, like, they didn't have a male form candle that's green for for money or for health. Like, you used a candle. You had whatever you had. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you had whatever you had. It wasn't like you had to get this certain crystal. You had to get this certain color candle. You just worked with what you had. You worked with salt. You worked with dirt. You worked mm -hmm. with what was in your backyard. Mm -hmm. You know? And we need to get back to that. I agree 100%. We need to get back to that. Um, uh. And I, re I really appreciate that thought process. We 
in a capitalistic society have really bought into the idea that we can buy spirituality. Mm -hmm. We can buy, and it may come from Christianity in a sense of we can buy our salvation. We can buy our way into heaven. I mean, that's something that has been used for a very long time. You know, and this idea of I want the best crystal, the biggest crystal, the most beautiful crystal. I want this rare crystal or I want, you know, what have you when it comes. I want to, you know, bathe in rose quartz, encrusted honey, manuka, like, you know. like That sounds great. No, <laughs> actually, where can I get that? <laughs> On second thought, scratch everything I said. No, I'm kidding. We got to go. <laughs> but, you know, this idea of like. Um, consuming more, spending yeah. more money, you know, where'd you find this or that? Mm-hmm. And it equivalating to being more spiritual or being more witchy mm-hmm. yeah. or looking a certain way. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. What are some things? Did you also have some things that you liked and disliked or were they about the... Mm. I'm just curious. If you... For metaphysical stories? Or... Yeah. Because I think it's important if they are listening to this by any chance that they know, like, here are some concerns your consumers have, so maybe they can fix it. Well, I actually remember um, for Modern Mystic, uh, before they did the location change to Pond City Market, mm-hmm. I went to both locations. So I've seen them since, like, when they first started out of, like, Paris the first six Pons. months. Yeah. Yeah. The so, little, like, Yeah. yeah. So, like, when they were in the little backstory of, like, Mm -hmm. Paris on Ponce Mm -hmm. to moving to Ponce City Market. Mm -hmm. And I do appreciate that there has been that um, more inclusion Mm -hmm. and more diversity. And I do appreciate that there is, I do appreciate that there are more resources. Mm -hmm. And it is a question of where. And it is a question of are we informing people, hey, if you buy, like, this bath salt kit and everything, like, still remember like you have to do the work mm-hmm. of we can write that like even on the product itself but in buying the product there's kind of this consumer mentality of like okay if i buy this like automatically i'm gonna get it yeah or okay if i do this then i don't really mm-hmm. have to engage the same way like yeah. mm-hmm. because i invested money i don't have to invest the same time and energy mm-hmm. very good point yeah so such a good point and that goes for all everything yeah stores or places you know like Mm-hmm. This idea of like, you know, like you were saying, like bath salts or you get a candle, right? And mm-hmm. you're like, oh, if I just light this candle, I'll it'll be, be easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be easy. Everything will work out. I don't have to do the work. I don't have to do the research. I don't have to put the intention. I don't know. need to know what moon phase it is. I don't even care. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to do it. It's easy. It's quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, That is something I truly believe has plagued any form of spirituality and religion yeah. across the board, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, this idea of, you know, we just are addicted to convenience. Yeah. We really are. It's funny. Cause that's even what I said with the pros. I was like, Oh, it's cool. Cause it was a one-stop shop <laughs> convenience, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 I'm definitely like a Walmart. product. Yeah. You know, but Walmart, <laughs> like, Walmart? it, like, makes you want to die. <laughs> it makes me wanna and it's die. less entertaining. I <laughs> love like, people you watching walk at Walmart. In, you're stoned as fuck, and it's like, <laughs> oh, the lights, you know, and I you buy that. a million things you don't need. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. Yeah. I will give them credit of, I know their intentions are good of, like, never encouraging spiritual bypassing. Mm-hmm. But it is kind of that, if it exists, then a lot of people will think, oh, I don't have to do it. Of yeah. kind of like getting the robot Zumba, but for your spirit. Yeah. <laughs> That's I like that. That's a good. Is that an analogy or a metaphor? I get those mixed up. Oh well. <laughs> Honestly, Google it yourself. Yeah, so you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I never said I passed grammar. So in these spaces. One thing that's been talked about a lot, we were talking about crystals. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. one thing that with research we have found is that um, there's a lot of child mining. There's a lot of Mm -hmm. um, slavery Mm -hmm. that has to do with mining. You know, we we hear blood diamonds, you know, like it's very similar for uh, crystals. Um. So it's so important that if we're in these spaces that we are very consciously consuming um, 
in general. We're just consciously consuming all things, but really wondering, like, where is this coming from? Um, One thing that I would really try to encourage everyone to do wherever they live is to find local minds that they can Mm-hmm. They can look for those crystals themselves. They can mine for those crystals themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of them they'll just have you like pay a fee or whatever. Yeah, some... I know we have several here. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I've been meaning to look into that. I, I can add that to the resources for people that are here in Georgia. Like yeah. at least, you know, they can know like where they can go to dig up their own. Things. Yeah, rose quartz, mm-hmm. quartz. I know we have copper um, deposits. That was my childhood dog's name. Sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and amethyst, mm-hmm. you know, and we I We have think, that here? Mm-hmm. I didn't know we that. We do. I learned something new every day. Mm. Mm. You're welcome. <laughs> it's just, I think what's really important is that we also that have, and this, it really, it's not just about crystals. Like, really this idea of, like, trading Like whether that's with our herbs, whether that's with our tinctures, our flower essences, Mm -hmm. with our, you know, with our crystals, what have you, we have got to get back to a point where we're not glorifying buying. Mm -hmm. We're not glorifying consuming in Mm -hmm. this way, you know, and that we really see the beauty in sharing with one another. Mm-hmm. the environment will always reflect yeah because i think it, it is important i don't think we're in any way saying like stop going to metaphysical shops because they obviously offer more than just products or most of them do like have classes and stuff or just someone to talk to to learn but i think it's retraining your brain and your mindset of like take 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 to just maybe go in your front fucking yard and pick up sticks or whatever like stones you can use literal like stones you know you don't Mm -hmm. have to have a certain i i'm of the mindset that and maybe this is an unpopular opinion but i think we're putting so much focus on crystals now and like having to use them and utilize them for certain things otherwise it won't work out or whatever when it's like i don't know i can speak to this we're in georgia if I go back in this, like, on a nature preserve that they're everywhere or just in the backyard with all these trees, I can find so many tools that Mother Nature has willingly offered to me right now that I can use in my practice. I don't need to just take, take, take and and put my money towards mass manufacturing of mining and raping the earth, like... I just think we need to retrain our brains and how we we look at our spiritual practice and needing to consume, like you were saying. But I'm in no way saying like metaphysical shops, you should just stop going because I that's not like the, yeah. that's not what I'm saying. Of course, but yeah, yeah I just wanted I to clarify, disclaimer. That, that vibe, you know? Yeah, no, I think that they, you know, metaphysical shops. I know I when I owned one, we offered such a. Mm-hmm so many resources to the community you know we offered so many resources to the community without being necessarily tax exempt like churches are and (laughs) yeah i mean you have to essentially claim as a religious structure Mm -hmm. to do that and that's a large giant label you're putting on yourself you know Mm -hmm. uh being a church or what have you you know and um I do think that, you know, there are so many amazing resources or resources that um, metaphysical stores or metaphysical spaces or community um, spiritual spaces are offering to the public that are offering to the community. Mm -hmm. Um, And we have to continue doing that. We have to continue to support those spaces. One thing that kind of comes to my mind is in Atlanta, and I can only speak for Atlanta. That's where I live. Um... We, and the one thing that really frustrated me is Atlanta has a really hard time with Mm. (laughs) co-ops. We do. We do because we're greedy motherfuckers. (laughs) It's true. Like you'll go to New Orleans, you'll go to Oakland, you'll go to Chicago. There's all these great like bookshops that are based off of whatever you can pay. Or you have food places. I mean, where is Food Not Bombs, Atlanta? Like, where is it? Like, where did they go? Like, I'm sure they're there doing the work. They, I haven't 
I remember doing food not bombs for years and I just kind of fell off the radar. My point is, is like we've had, we have seen so many artists and spiritual collectives just flourish and then fall because of the greediness that has happened. And we've really got to check ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've really got to check with what is benefiting me will also benefit my brothers and sisters. It will also benefit my community. Mm-hmm. And um, me to just take this torch on my own is really not going to help me in the long run. And that's just my personal opinion. But at the end of the day, we have got to be there for one another. Mm-hmm. It's a frustration that I've felt even recently in the magical community. I've taken a big step back. I'm still having witch and weekends, but... You know, this idea of we've had so many new people that would just come and then they would never come again because they Mm -hmm. just want to consume. Mm -hmm. They just want to consume and they don't want to be part of constantly learning, constantly growing, constantly being held accountable as a human Mm -hmm. Um, because that takes work. Mm -hmm. Got to put in the work. work. Yeah, Yeah, it really does. One was there anything? Sorry, I immediately started talking. <laughs> You're good. Um, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of flex culture of Atlanta of just you want to have the status, but if you have the status, you have to maintain the status too. So if you're like, oh yeah, you know, like I'm spiritually woke, mm-hmm. um, and it's an external thing, and you never have to really look internally of going to the classes, um, taking the time with yourself, facing the discomfort, mm-hmm. then. And also like, oh, what am I doing ethically? Thank you. (laughs) What am I doing ethically? How am I going about this? What are my intentions? Am I doing this because I want to bypass actually doing the work? Or am I doing this because I want to? Mm -hmm. Unlike religion, you can't just say you're saved because you judge other people. And (laughs) you can't necessarily go about saying like, oh, spirituality only means this. Like you can with religion of there's strong doctrines, which not knocking religion. Um, Those who are comforts and like pleases. That's awesome. Um, but there's no defined rules. You have to create them and you also have to be honest with yourself. Am I doing this to validate myself or am I doing this because like this is actually something that venerates me and other people around mm. me? I think spirituality, you you even quoted something where it's like you're going from within, but I think the point is like introspection is very like important. Self accountability. You can't just like, you know, take the actions and think like okay i'm good and i think sometimes religion encourages that like if i'm if i'm doing all the steps like i'm good but if if your heart's and i know some i can only speak from what i come from or what i was raised but i know some christians that they genuinely do believe like it is a a heart thing as well i'm just Mm -hmm. saying in the broad scheme of things i do kind of notice like more of a these are the steps I have to take and I'm good and I don't have to introspect and I don't have to Mm self-reflect and I don't have to check myself and do the work and you know what do you think the origin of that is of what of that mindset Mm -hmm. is it my first my first instinct is like patriarchy (laughs) patriarchy (laughs) but I need to I would have to um have a substantiated reason as to why i think that so i I, of course my first instinct is to say that but i would need to actually practice what i just preached and think on that before i answer yeah (laughs) i'm not sure i'm just thinking like (laughs) with ego Mm -hmm. you know when i think about consumerism you know i think that when we go back to our actions we can really see a basic origin of all of them it's usually just fear and love that's pretty Mm -hmm. much it Mm -hmm. you know am i acting out of fear or i'm acting out of love and the you know sub uh contents of that Mm -hmm. whatever love looks like whatever fear looks like yeah rejection abandonment jealousy you know love compassion forgiveness understanding kindness yeah you know and the idea of like why do i feel like i need to feed my ego with consuming things Mm -hmm. and then possibly posting it Mm -hmm. so we were just talking danny and i were just talking about like is it real is it is it invisible if you don't post it on social media i'm talking about invisible work um i was just talking about i feel like even though i've stepped back on the classes and the 
gatherings, I am doing a ton of work as witch mama. Like I am still a spiritual guider. I still do death ritual, house ritual, so many different types of things that people call upon me to do. But if I don't post it, which I don't, it's personal. Um, Mm -hmm. Is it invisible if it's on social media? What do you guys think? I mean, sorry, I'm always like, if you want to go go. first, okay. (laughs) I'm like trying to be better about that. Um, I'm still, I'm still uh, meditating on it. So, okay. Yeah. I, you know, intuitively, obviously my answer would be like, no, it's not invisible. You're clearly doing the work in the universe, God, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I imagine would recognize that. So my immediate answer, yeah, it's not, or no, it's not invisible. Does that make sense? I know words. Um, But I do think we're in a era now with like branding yourself and marketing where, and even with like algorithms on the social media platforms where if you're not posting, they start to suppress your content more. Mm -hmm. So from a marketing and branding standpoint, I would tell you, yeah, you're invisible because you're not posting it from, and I think that's silly, obviously, but from a like surface level marketing and branding where we are this day and age, yeah, it's invisible, unfortunately, because we're such a like, like we were talking about consuming mindset where we need to see it. We need instant gratification. We need constant content. That's the reason why like Places like YouTube are bigger than like mainstream television because you can constantly consume. Unfortunately, that's where we're at. So yeah, it would seem you're invisible. I think that is silly because you're obviously your work. And and I mean, in general, with whatever we choose not to post, that is a spiritual work. Um, Obviously, you're doing the work, so it counts. But it is sad to see that you're almost like, reprimanded via these social platforms for not consistently posting the things and not always making them aesthetically pleasing hashtag witches of Instagram hashtag witchy things you know like Mm -hmm. that's something I've been struggling with on my own page is like trying to check myself when I post something like am I doing this uh to get likes to get comments to get interaction or am I doing this because I genuinely want to blog and share what I'm experiencing like I would have wanted when I was first starting out so I could learn you know it's Mm -hmm. it's a because I I I have a sometimes a love hate relationship with consumerism um, and capitalism because I wouldn't have probably found witchcraft or wicca first if it weren't for mm. so double edged oh, sword that is so <laughs> dang <No. laughs> man that's a that's kind of a hard pill to swallow yeah that's mm. kind of a hard pill to swallow because and one thing that we've talked about a lot a couple of things we've talked about a few times one the idea of being an artist and feeling like you constantly need to be updating posting content to stay relevant to stay visible but it loses its substance in Mm -hmm. a way it loses its magic it also like erases its work Mm -hmm. you do so much work doing that Mm -hmm. so much work editing and all the things Mm -hmm. um but at the same time like you know how ego and consumerism overtakes spirituality Mm -hmm. we i think we all can think of an instagram handle where it's someone who is under the guise of witchiness or mental health i know we've talked about that too where it's like this feels directed towards ego Mm -hmm. this does not feel directed towards growing as a higher self Mm -hmm. you know and or this feels like patriarchal This feels like I need to look a certain way to be a witch. I need to have this many crystals to be a witch. I need to have this new tarot deck to be a witch. And it not just 
allowing to express yourself as a human and growing in more organic ways. Mm-hmm. Um, one person I know I'm probably not saying her name correctly is Asia Solar from One Willow Apothecary. She is a personal favorite of mine. Check her out on YouTube. Um, she really incorporates how to just use oneself and what's around you to continue your spell work, to connect with your deity, to connect with the earth. And I find that incredibly refreshing. You know, it's not all like, who did my nails? Mm -hmm. And, you know, all these things that have nothing to do with your growth and spirituality. Granted, we were just talking. What about beauty magic? What about glamour magic? That's something that is relevant, you know? It's totally relevant. I think about all the sorcerers before us who had to utilize those things. But for what? For the male gaze? Sure. <laughs> like, yes, why? Because I feel like in this day and age... We're taking shit back. We're fucking over it. We can walk through a makeup list, doing our hair however we want. We just rolled out of bed. And it's like, if you don't find this sexy, my inner self, my kindness, my compassion, my vibrance, my deliciousness as I am, I don't need all that fucking love magic on my face. That's just a personal opinion. Mm -hmm. That's just a personal opinion. I mean, granted, I put some eyeshadow on today because we got some lights in here, (laughs) you know, but like, (laughs) do you know what I'm saying? No, at the end of the day, it's like when I think about glamour magic, I'm like, who are you trying to draw in? Well, I think sometimes it's just for you of with the reclamation process of, Especially, like, I hear so many um, beauty gurus who are just like, I don't do makeup for guys. Like, if I were doing makeup for guys, like, it's just... They're doing it for women. Yeah. (laughs) Like, girls, hi. Yeah, so even when it does become, like, a gaze thing, it's just like, okay, am I feeling, like, validated? Am I feeling acceptance? Like, am I feeling, like, a sense of belonging with other women? And then I see some people who do um, glamour magic, and they're just like, no, this is literally just, like, what I have in my mirror right now. Mm. And that's powerful too like whether someone is posing whether someone isn't but when it becomes like there's this sense of pressure just like oh shit i didn't do valencia filter oh gosh i need to like edit this out does my chin look so and so does like then it's just like okay no like if you feel like you're less powerful because you don't show up in a way that fits how someone else wants you to then it's not really for you Mm. i i feel like in response to that, like a part of me feels like being the devil's advocate and the devil knows how much I love being his advocate. <laughs> <laughs> Lily. But, but it's like, but when do we walk in a space, fresh face, no product in here, no nothing in here, where we feel as confident, where we feel as unapologetically beautiful? How often does that happen? How often do we walk in a space completely raw? Let's say even without all of this. I mean, I do that every day. Hell yeah. But that's because I walk dogs all day and I know they love me for who I am. But I literally, no makeup, like a sweatshirt I've worn for the past four days, ratty like sweatpants. And I'll walk into like, you know, Metro Fresh, Whole Foods, Arden's Garden, like in food, like. So, you are uh, I don't care drop dead okay okay bye is, guys but like no but, but you know, it took, I'm talking about the general but yeah in general public but I would say that I humans. used to I used to be of that mindset too um especially uh honestly I just stopped giving a shit because it was too much effort going into like for example let me like paint a little bit more of a picture I grew up in Kansas predominantly white school i was waking up state ever (laughs) that's why i live in atlanta now i mean you can it's not for me but it might be for someone else but i know that when i was there i was waking up at six in the morning before school every day straightening my hair when i would i remember this is how like much i gave a shit more than i should have about what i looked like 
every between every single period um in between classes i'd go in a bathroom i'd find a bathroom i'd look at myself i even would keep a straightener in my locker and i would go and i would straighten my hair in the bathroom like that's how much i gave a shit about how i looked i had to wear makeup i'd cake like i was like cake face to the max like every day i wouldn't go to pool parties because i didn't want my hair to get curly Uh, Mm -hmm. i didn't want my makeup to come off I like refused to even work out and I used to do competitive tennis like I would wear full on eye makeup at like day long tennis meets like I you could not fucking see me not wearing makeup and my hair straightened and I was that way up until like I moved to Atlanta five six years ago I don't know how long it's been and I started being surrounded I think that's what it took for me as being surrounded by other women of color who had their full-fledged afros out or whatever, like, hairstyles I wasn't used to seeing, who were just bare-faced or maybe would just wear a little. Um, Just being around people that you could tell they were very comfortable and confident in themselves. Honestly, when I started practicing as a witch, that's when the self-love of Mm. not needing exterior validation came in. Mm. For me, I don't know what it would be for anyone else. But I think sometimes it's surrounding yourself with people that, like, you can see they very much feel empowered by themselves and they don't need the outward validation. For me, that's what it took. I don't know mm-hmm. for everyone else. But I know what you're saying to the point of, as a whole, in Western society, how much pressure is, like you said, is actually put on that. I definitely don't negate that. I can only speak, you know, to, like, my experience, what it took for me. Hear your experience. Thanks, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I don't know a lot about glamour magic, so I don't. Uh, I can't really speak that much on it. I mean, I just think it's interesting in the idea of like. So if we're going back to just witchcraft in general, the adapting mm-hmm. to today's society, mm-hmm. right? I mean, obviously, with Sephora having like witch kits. Is way different than a hundred years ago how you would see witchcraft now. <laughs> yeah. You know, like the idea of a place having witch kits a hundred years ago is unspeakable. <laughs> mm-hmm. So are we evolving in a positive direction when we have witch kits that are regularly available to people? Or are we tainting the idea of the spiritual aspects of witchcraft by using it to like, where did this stuff get made from? Like, you know, the idea of consumerism um, backing it. Mm-hmm. And really, I feel like the root of all of this is awareness and consciousness of like what you're doing and why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of just like flippantly buying, um, you know, your sage bundles, where are they coming from, Mm -hmm. you know, and who is benefiting or not benefiting from you buying them in the first place? And can you grow your own? And really... The answer is you can. The answer is you can. (laughs) If you want. Absolutely. But the thing is, is it takes work. And and if you're not willing to do the work, then that's that's something you need to really check yourself on that's a i think that's the main point uh for is doing the work when it comes to capitalism and witchcraft is um which i think now would be a good time to kind of talk about our research we've been doing on like palo santo and crystals and stuff yeah because that's something where we do need to do the work and like you said we need to be conscious of what the fuck is going on and what we're contributing to and putting our money towards because like at the end of the day um, I think it was Killer Mike that was talking about it. It was in regards to the Black Lives Matter movement, though, where he was saying we where our money goes to, like that's gonna it's gonna keep funding it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's it's gonna perpetuate it if we keep putting our money towards it. In his case, he was talking about like we need to make sure we're more um, cognizant of of um, helping put our money towards like black owned businesses and stuff to build ourselves up. But I think that also same rule applies to. We need to be aware of what we're putting our money towards if we are, you know, contributing towards mass manufacturing of child labor mining 
we need to stop putting our money towards that because all they see is we are getting money so we're going to keep doing this as so long as people are paying for it um, for sure and yeah. if you're thinking mm-hmm. from things from a spiritual perspective and that's one thing that we saw at atl craft was like if you're going to be using them something for magic or for a spiritual um purpose like where it came from is a factor you yeah. can't ignore that as a factor and the energy that it brings mm-hmm. you know and uh it's very very important at least with the research that we were talking about previously was um a lot of you know mining for crystals are people who have impoverished places it's creating uh you know destruction environmentally mm-hmm. um That's quite literally a complete contradiction to witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Like the idea is to be harmonious with earth. It's not to continue to destroy it and rape it and treat it badly Mm -hmm. to say that we have some sort of crystal that, let's be honest, how many motherfuckers know what these crystals do in their (laughs) their history? Like when it comes to ancient Chinese medicine, I can pretty much guarantee you that most of these people don't fucking know what, you know, what the true purposes of you know jet or black tourmaline or obsidian or lapis like what those have to do with the body what it has to do with the chakras and if you know and that also kind of comes back around to doing the work Mm um and when it comes to sage we were talking about how um we had learned you know we had done research and there are different mixed messages on if it's in danger or not the idea is if you're probably buying it from a metaphysical store or a local store that it's probably mass produced via farming and not necessarily wild crafted so it may not necessarily be um endangered as a whole which is comforting to know in certain aspects but it's also like once again is this ethically sourced? Mm-hmm. Can I create this myself? Can I grow this myself? And what are the properties of white sage that I maybe could be using something different, like cedar or rosemary or, you know, there are multiple things. Pine. We're in the South. We have other things that we could be using <laughs> mm-hmm. to set our intention locally that's really speaking to us mm-hmm. instead of trying to incorporate let's be honest, another culture's spiritual prog- uh, process. Mm-hmm. Um, First Nations, when it comes to really using white sage, it's Native Americans. Mm-hmm. So are we just adopting this because it's cute and easy and trendy? You know, what kind of respect are we paying to the people who, cre- you know, really reaped and sowed this plant but also like have used this for thousands of years Mm -hmm. it is necessary that we have this type of awareness and consciousness Mm -hmm. it is it is necessary that we recognize that obviously we're learning and growing obviously adaptation of different cultures is going to happen mm-hmm. yeah. especially in this day and age we are so it's a melting pot, melting pot. Mm-hmm. but paying respects and really communing with herbs it, and crystals is vital to our work when we teach our um food energy class we talk about herbalism um when i teach a teacher class etc We talk about, or I have people do divination where I have all these herbs laid out and they have to, they don't know where they are. They just have to like feel out the vibration. And just like anything, herbs will speak to you. They have spirit. They can choose if they want to work with your biological self, with your energy or not. And you may be like, okay, well, I'm going to work with mint and mint fucking hates your ass. <laughs> Damn. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Why you gotta my, do me like that, mint? My, my point is, is like... supposed to be cool. <laughs> like that was a good one. I got that. That was a good one. <laughs> that was good. Sorry, I'm so easily No, we have amused. to stop and appreciate like, that. I appreciate, that we have to really stop good. and appreciate that. 
Sorry. Anyway. No, my point is, is like we have become so disconnected with nature that we have forgotten the fact that certain herbs and plants uh, vibe with our energy better. If you eat Brussels sprouts, you may be gassy and you feel like shit. It's the same thing. There's a spirit to the to the plant. There's a spirit to herbs as well. Cannabis. Some people can can use cannabis and be wonderful, you know, wonderful people just going out, being their amazing selves, while other people who use cannabis can be like, it makes me feel like shit and I'm paranoid and I hate it. Mm-hmm. My point is, is like spirit of plant will always be working or working not necessarily with us. We need to commune with that plant. Be aware with that plant to really get to that spiritual place of growth. Mm-hmm. We've lost that. Mm-hmm. We're just like eucalyptus and lavender all day. Mm-hmm. Lavender <laughs> may not like you. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because those are like my two main things. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that and... um. Well, now I've dialed back on Palo Santo, though. Anyway, but those are my, my well, two Palo faves. Well, Palo Santo also, trees. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, we're going to start, like, growing our own stuff now. Good. But I'm, my first step is lavender because I really do love let me know how it goes. Lavender, I've always had a hard time with. Oh, God. In the it's well, like a dry desert. Matt's plant. good at that. So I'll just, like,. Follow along and see how I can oh, you learn, it. and then I'll get to the point where I'm like, okay, I can do this. Mm-hmm. Um, but sorry, anyway, side. So but it was just funny because those are my two favorites. <laughs> so I love, yeah, I love you. <laughs> that and mint, the mm-hmm. cool one. I used to use almonds for glamour magic, and then almonds said, "I don't fucking like you." Just, just Thank you. They're like, like, just had me just choking, and I'm like, okay, guess I'm allergic to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna stay away. <laughs> no, my bad. <laughs> no, I mean I think that's a perfect example though, and people don't think about it that way. They and we were just having this conversation when I walked in. And it's like this idea that we just consume, we just consume things that are terrible for us that make us feel terrible. But like eat a whole pizza, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh god, I feel like shit, and you're like, yeah, because a bunch of cheese. I never feel and bad some about fucking no, okay. gluten. <laughs> all day yeah. my point is just like no, it's saying. the same thing anything in nature that you're ingesting whether that's mm-hmm. something you're putting on your skin you're using spiritually you're eating you're drinking what have you all of these things have an energetic vibration to them mm-hmm. and your body you are an energetic vibration yourself you are a fucking star and it's like sometimes you know it those things, drive. yeah it doesn't drive yeah. it doesn't and some things do. Mm-hmm. Some things are willing to work with you. Some spirits are really willing and ready to work with you. Mm-hmm. But these are things that people just mindlessly pick up mm-hmm. by. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, they sit in their closet, they sit in their cabinet, bath salt, whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. It's that like, was something I learned also about like when I first started talking about like consumerism. I was buying, or I was like so into tarot cards and like wanting the cute the rider what is it the rider weight deck that's like the the go to the what's cute? the one that everyone like everyone wild has it wild and no um <laughs> but if it, if it if it works for you it works for you whatever brooklyn <laughs> <laughs> me trying to be politically whatever correct whatever works for you <laughs> but for me i but i i like I mean, I like tarot and all, but, like, speaking to, like, just, I was just buying shit because, hello, plant. Hello. Oh, <laughs> my, I guess we're connecting. Um, But I quickly learned, like, I do better with runes for divination, and I, and I remember thinking, like, what's wrong that I'm not connecting to tarot like everyone else on Instagram and, like, mm-hmm. Tumblr seems to be doing, like, it, and then I, I think that's a good point. Some things, they just may not be your thing your ancestral language it could be your spiritual language Mm -hmm. and i think that's a really good example Mm -hmm. tarot is flooded i like the community Mm -hmm. people are like tarot all day which is a whole other conversation we don't have but yeah i mean like (laughs) as far as like consumerism and like wanting to buy tarot because i saw it and was like i have to get this and i have to like make this work for me mm. and even though time and time again the runes were the thing that were like no that's so interesting pick like me. ancestrally mm-hmm. you know um and then we were going to talk about palo santo mm-hmm. you know it's like 
I have read that there are certain communities that need us to buy Palo Santo Mm -hmm. because that's their way of living. And then I've also heard that, you know, they're struggling. You know, is, is there no other way that we can utilize local plants? I mean, is that not the most economic and eco-friendly thing to do anyway? Mm-hmm. I mean, have you guys burned rosemary? It's amazing. Pine? Mm. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, really connecting, asking. P- people will ask, and, I, and they might in the comments, but be like, okay, well, how do I know? Like, let's say I want to work with pine, but I don't know. Ask it. It's not hard. Like, use divination if you need to, tarot, pendulum, whatever, you know. But at the end of the day, you'll know. You Mm -hmm. will know if it wants to work with you or not, Mm -hmm. for sure. And also, like, be honest with the answer. Don't just, like, Mm -hmm. oh, it's telling me yes, even though it's just, like, like the entire plant just moved itself away from you. <laughs> Your hands are on fire. You're like, oh, yes, it's a yes. It grows legs and runs out the door. <laughs> Love me. That's like with tarot. Like uh-huh. People are like, I saw a meme the other day. It was like you pull tarot cards and you're like, that can't be right. And you shuffle it again. You pull the same card. It's like screams, you know, like, yeah, I mean, there definitely has to be an intense honesty that you have with yourself in witchcraft. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to be honest with yourself. Also, at what point do we put responsibility on the metaphysical shops of like, just to come back around to like where they get their stuff of sourcing it and citing it. You tell them like, cause I feel like it is, a, there is a big responsibility. This is my personal opinion for them to do that. Like I, I, especially with what we've been reading about crystals specifically at this point, like, I, for myself, I can't morally buy crystals anymore until I know, like, where they are coming from. I'll swap with people, you know. But Crystal swap. Crystal swap. We should, th- that yeah. definitely yeah. needs to be a thing. We do need, we but do need to be a thing. I, like, I, I just think now it's like, y'all need to start putting where it's at. And if you got it from a mine, where did they get it where from? Where is the mine? And mm-hmm. you should be able to ask that. And that's. Yeah. That's the thing is, like, we were talking about really encouraging people to go to their local gym and mineral shows and being mm-hmm. able to ask these questions. They should be able to tell the answer. If they don't, can't tell you the answer, then don't buy it. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of local mining places that are gym and mineral shows that you can get, like, ethically sourced things. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, we wanted to bring up, like, the Tucson oh gym and mineral show and how if you don't look at those pictures and feel a little heartbroken – like looking and seeing these giant crystals that have been just completely taken from mm-hmm. our source of life. Mm-hmm. It's like taking out magical parts of our body. The earth is like our body. It's just a metaphor. And it's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. It's heartbreaking to me, like really watching it to see it. To see the raping of our earth in so many different ways, but in a way that's glorified in the spiritual community. Mm-hmm. It's really rough. Yeah, here's like an excerpt from, um, and I, I'll link it in the description. Um, industrial mines in many other countries. Um, oh, sorry, one second. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, for example, children as young as seven work the mines yeah seven yeah i know that happens in south yeah yeah and then another thing with the tucson uh last year's one or i I think this was from 2018 so this would have been 2017 i believe um there's the one that's right in this article said she was offered a relatively cheap stock of bright green jade but it was from and i'm gonna mispronounce this myanmar myanmar um, where the lucrative jade industry has been deemed a hotbed of environmental corruption, quote, the biggest natural resource heist in modern history, end quote. According to one report, the New York Times has compared Myanmar, Myanmar jade to blood diamonds as its extractions has, quote, helped finance a bloody ethnic conflict and unleashed an epidemic of heroin use and HIV infection among mm. the 
uh, Kachin Kahin minority who work the mines. I quote. just have like a like a wave yeah. over me because this is not this is not a rare occurrence. No. This is not like this is not like oh this one place has issues. This yeah. We have we have a responsibility as witches. Specifically as witches, we're supposed to be communing with the earth. We're supposed to be protecting her and enhancing her and connecting with her and allowing ourselves to grow as one organism, one breathing, thriving organism and not hurting our brothers and sisters and our earth. I just had this moment of thinking, if we want to hurt, even if it's subconsciously, is it because we really want to hurt ourselves? It's because we really believe that we deserve to be treated that way. And that's some deep work. Some deep work if we are so unaware of the pain that we believe that we deserve, that we would do that. You know, we are not disconnected from these people. These people are our people. These people are our people. Mm -hmm. And this earth is the earth that we are connected with. We live on. We love. So where have we gotten to a point where we believe that we deserve as a collective whole to be treated this way? We don't. We need to do better. Mm -hmm. Do better. Two. See better. episode two. <laughs> See episode one, two, and three. Do better. I think episode <laughs> two or one. It was. Mm. it was. Uh, did you have? Sorry, I feel like I'm talking. Oh, over. Um. Yeah. Uh, at some point, it does become you're consuming so much of yourself that so much of the world around you that when you're faced with yourself, what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. Like, you're just gasolining the entire, like, earth around you. And then, okay, all that's left is, like, this one match in my hand. I literally have nothing else that I can go to. Mm. And in part, I feel like it is absolutely a self thing and absolutely a shadow thing. Sorry, I, like, I'm so far from the mic. No. Um, it is absolutely a self and a shadow thing. And it also is an us versus them thing of when you separate yourself from the people mm. around you. When you separate yourself of like, I'm only going to focus on good thoughts. I'm only going to focus on the positive because if I look into the shadow, that means I'm negating a part of myself that I want to promote. Mm -hmm. Of Everyone wants to believe that they're good people. But when you, at the second that you determine I'm either good or I'm bad and I want to just believe that I'm good, you are also doing that with the people around you of like, oh, I wouldn't make that personal choice myself. So that person's bad. That's not my people. So good. Yes. I agree. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. so strong. That is so true. Mm -hmm. That is so deep and deeply rooted in that is like a virus in our society right now. And something I've talked about multiple times on live Instagram is like this idea of like get toxic people away from like good vibes only this whole thing. And it's like you're toxic. You're toxic. I'm toxic. You're toxic. We're all toxic. We have toxicity. We have shadow space. We all have habits that are ingrained in us we have trauma from lineage we you know none of us have arrived and mm -hmm. we if we want to be like i am this high spiritual being that's always vibrating in this like extremely high plane we're lying to ourselves we're all growing we're all learning mm -hmm. and we have to have this it's a fine line we have to have this compassion and kindness and understanding an open-mindedness to continue to have relationships with people who have toxicity because we ourselves do. Right. Um, but we also obviously have to recognize abusive behavior. That's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm making excuses for those people or for the, that behavior. Mm -hmm. But I really think, and I've said this, there's a lot of bad advice happening <laughs> right now on Instagram <laughs> and social media. And... One of them is good vibes only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Or um, that's like you just said of like the toxic, um, get toxic people away from you. It's knowing, do my demons play well with this other person's demons? Ooh, 
girl, yes. Can you say that louder for those in the back? <laughs> so, do my demons play well with this other person's demons? Mm. Mm. Because everyone just wants to believe they're like avenging angels. Lucifer yes. was an angel too. So, like, what are so you choosing? Good. What are you like really telling yourself? Oh, that is so true. That is so true because it's like, it's kind of like the idea that like hatred will bring people together stronger than love will. And I know that may not be necessarily true, but people feel that way. It's like this idea of everybody can hate one thing. They'll just like be so strongly connected. And it's like, what enables me to continue with my toxic behavior that other person allows me to do, you know, allows me to be, uh, I was just having this wonderful conversation with Megan Nair, Tough Love Yoga, and we were talking about how, so we have a community. Let's say you are in a magical community and it's like brother, sister, friend, vibrations. You know what it's like to be in a group. And there's someone who kind of rubs you the wrong way, like sandpaper, right? And they allow you to explore your boundaries. They allow you to explore different ways of thinking. They may uh, be confrontational and that may be uncomfortable, But the fact that you continue to show up and they continue to show up allows that you are willing to grow, that you are willing to make changes or, you know, really reevaluate different perspectives, et cetera, et cetera. But what we have found in this day and age, and especially with social media, that the cool thing is to ghost. The cool thing is to be like, oh, that makes me feel uncomfortable. That person called me out and said that I'm... A, B, or C, well, I'm, I'm out. Bad, bad vibes, <laughs> you know, like bad vibes, a toxic person, whatever. And it's like, you no, know, you need to face that. You need to communicate that. It could very well be true. Be open to the idea if there's an abusive relationship, like I'll say over and over, it's like, I'm not making excuses for anything like that, but it's like, sit in your uncomfortableness. It is the age of feeling uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And it is time for us to really feel uncomfortable because sandpaper against wood, that's uncomfortable. But in the end, you have an incredible sculpture at the end. In the end, you've learned and you've grown and you've shaped yourself into the person that you need to be. And unless you have people, if you have people who just reflect back what you want to see, the demons that play well with you, you're never going to get anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. maybe that's something that uh, will be nice to be seen more in different like um, metaphysical shops is more of that. Not just dodging the not so favorable reality of what is going on. You know, yeah. I think that's how it could be tied into that is like, I think um, maybe the first instinct for someone who maybe owns a metaphysical shop or sells metaphysical tools or whatever might be to be like, well, but that's not me though, or, but I do this. And it might be like a quick, not repulsive, but I think that this can apply to someone who has a metaphysical shop to not be so quick to be like, well, that doesn't serve me. You know, I'm not going to, think about this providing accountability yeah Mm -hmm. and i think it's important that we all whether it's relationships people that are like sandpaper to us or whether it is like having to face the harsh reality that like i would appreciate it if let's say not saying that this is what they do but let's just say phoenix and dragon realize like Fuck, we have a lot of crystals, and a lot of them were mined inhumanely um, and unethically. Let's just own up to it. Like, hey, for years we've been doing this. Because um, it sucks. There's an ego part there where you don't want to have to admit that. But I would appreciate it. And, not, and again, I'm not saying they did this. If they would just be like, look, we've been doing this for years, and they've been unethically sourced. But starting today, we're not doing that anymore. Mm. Mm-hmm. so good i think i would appreciate mm-hmm. that more than just trying to like be like no that doesn't serve me i'm gonna just keep doing it because it's probably fine and there's really no like like i was on like literally last night a live stream with some like 
uh, other YouTube witches and I was just listening and asking questions. I was asking them about this um, blood diamond parallel to the crystal industry. And, um, you know, they did agree, like, we are kind of raping the earth, blah, blah, blah. But they were like, but how are we, how are we to really know where they come from? Like, you know, at a certain point, I don't know, there was some apologetic for it. And in my mind, I'm like, that's your job. If you are selling it, you need to vet where this shit's coming from. I know mm-hmm. it sucks because you're not going to make as much money maybe sorry, now. It's yeah, mm-hmm. sorry it's not convenient <laughs> and you've built an empire. I don't I'm not saying that she did, but I'm saying in general I'm, that you build an empire off of this, but um if you really practice what you preach, sorry like bro, you need to you need to vet your shit and you need to tell people where it comes from and guess what it's okay if you fucked up for years and you were buying from that i mean it's not okay but it's okay you know like well there's room for change it. yeah you know? i think we have to see that we should be allowed to change our minds we should be exactly. allowed to grow mm-hmm. yeah. um i can honestly say uh this is kind of off topic but and this is something you may be able to connect with, but like I was Christian growing up and I was anti-choice. Mm-hmm. And I always say that that was one of the most regrettable or the only regrettable thing I have in my life. But I can, but the people who knew me back then and who know me now, they're like, oh, well, you're so different. And I was like, yeah, I can be educated and I can be less ignorant and I can change and I can do better. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. we should be able to do that. We, we should, should be able to t- people that make a change for yeah. the better instead of like pulling them down and like shaming them for it. It's like, look, they're fucking trying. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people assume that self-love is walking away from everything that doesn't serve me. And mm-hmm. then you don't want to actually define, OK, I look at love as if I feel like I'm lacking in some way, then that means I'm not being loved. Mm -hmm. and like i meet a lot of people like that actually or like you can walk away from a million people you can shame a million people but at the end of the day like your shadow's still there Mm -hmm. and then the same emotions the same judgment that you're still trying to not face in yourself you're just throwing it out to the world Mm -hmm. and especially with um metaphysical stories eh, metaphysical stories with other people with other healers the same way of like oh just vet them Mm -hmm that's another level of honesty Mm -hmm. so especially if like oh well i don't really care what they get it from so you don't care Mm -hmm. why like really be honest with yourself of why you don't care Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we say metaphysical stores we also want to reiterate that that means like online yeah there are like etsy all day Mm -hmm. like i best believe that if y'all buying crystals on ebay and etsy you probably have no fucking clue where they're coming from so (laughs) y'all just not doing that shit (laughs) no more of that i mean at least inquire like do you know you know at least try to care and one thing that we wanted to bring up too is like just waste you know Mm -hmm. when you buy these things i don't think and one thing that I learned owning Angel Craft is like, okay, so if I ordered something, it came in a box, hopefully environmentally friendly packaging, most likely not. And I just was like, what the fuck? Like, this is all supposed to be organic products and local and all these things. And it's just like, it came from, you know, only a hundred miles away. And it's like, there is so much trash you know, and people don't think about that. They don't think about like, oh, I'm buying this body scrub, this magical body scrub. And it's like, what did it come in? Is it in plastic? Can I reuse this? Like mm-hmm. things like that. Th- we need to take it to even that level. Mm-hmm. You know, like how can we, we reuse this product? Is this creating more waste? Is it creating more hurt than, than not? That's a good thing to bring up because that's um, something for me to keep a mental note of is packaging and yeah. have it be recyclable and or biodegradable or whatever because if we are really trying to be in alignment with what our practice is then that includes that would include that yeah you know, mm-hmm. and aware. you know the best way to avoid waste and packaging is do it yourself <laughs> Grow yourself, you, motherfuckers. You remind me, remind She's me. the worst. That's what it is. 
Parks and Rec. If you're not a Parks and Rec <laughs> fan, then just get the fuck off right now. We're about to. <laughs> we might fight because I think The Office is better. Oh, I'm not gonna fight you because I don't have the energy. <laughs> I, just, I don't yeah. have the energy, but Parks and Rec is I better. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be like uh till the end of time that's always gonna be a thing where it's like <laughs> parks and rec versus the office but i love them both i'm i'm just i'm just joking <laughs> um insta witches that we love co comados Duh. we love you um we stan um uh, i'm trying to think i'm trying to think i trap witch love her i love her um so She's amazing uh, human being. I don't really follow a ton of I witches, appreciate actually. the trap witch for her. N- and everyone's got their, their thing. But I love that she does not, like, try to have this flowy, hippy-dippy, like, zend out thing. If that's her thing, it's her thing, and that's totally cool. I love that because I feel like I, like, what you get is what you get in real life. And I like that. Doesn't she also talk about like how she used to like strip and shit too? Like yeah. I just love the raw grit because, um, and I love that we're seeing more black witches come come out because that was another thing. Like I didn't really feel like a lot of representation on online even. And don't get me wrong, like my favorite witch is Stevie Nicks. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Stevie Nicks. We love <laughs> who was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame <laughs> twice. Just saying. Anyway, um, but yeah, Trap Witch is really good. Uh, yeah. House of Hoodoo. Jessica Ooh, yes. is amazing. That's it Harmony for me. Nice is one. Yeah, but she's on YouTube too. Yeah, Johnny um, Nichols. Oh, yes. Nichols. Um, astrology. I think most of my woo woo is all astrology on Instagram and astro memes because you do let's be real <laughs> astrology memes are amazing they're funny do you have any other insta witches you can think of mm. tatiana tiro tatiana immediately tiro. i was like bust it down tatiana <laughs> i want to see you bust it down sorry um <laughs> i actually i actually happen. like that song um, in a like in a way where I'm like, I wish I didn't like this song. I'm trying to look and see if I know it's any other. It's one of those songs that grows on you, whether you There's want to or not. There's one that's like Jake astrology <sighs> memes you. that is by far my favorite. Oh, and queer, <laughs> queer astrology. Queer astrology. Definitely really, really good. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah. The Mexican witch, uh, Valeria, is wonderful. It was interesting. Brooklyn had, had a conversation a couple weeks back about like the saturation of like all things woo when you have an algorithm and this idea of like when you log in and it's just like a flood of oversaturation of like you know where every single planetary alignment and it's barfed at you in like pastel colors and lots of stickers and you're just like I'm so tired of seeing it (laughs) like I don't care I'm so sick by it I don't want to see one more fucking moonstone (laughs) (laughs) like I don't like I want something Stop else. Stop my hair. Yeah. Sorry. And then we talked about like just how Instagram has this way of it's like ultra consumerism. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like sa- it's so much saturation. Mm-hmm. Really, we should take breaks for mm-hmm. sure. Like maybe Sundays. I actually liked, um, <laughs> I'll, and I'll plug it. I'll plug it below. I liked. Um, she's. I don't think she. Well, no, she's not a witch, but. Um, Corey wrote a really good post about um, taking kind of a break and only posting when you feel like, like, okay, I want to post about this. And before she was saying she was post- Corey. Uh, Corey James. Um, That's Corey James. <laughs> at, <laughs> I, I, well, we can link it because I, is it Corey James tattoo? And then there's colorful yeah. there's try a couple, but something. But anyway, are. but the point was like, she was saying like she felt like and i think this applies to witchcraft the community um where she was admitting like a lot of times she was posting and uh, seeking validation through it Mm. and was or or just feeling like pressured like i have to keep posting i have to keep my content flowing da 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 and then reading also self-help books where they're constantly like encouraging you to push 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 but not like hey you know it's cool if you're having a shitty day and you don't want to do shit and you're not feeling inspired it's totally fine don't have to do shit it's cool and i anyway there's a couple 
blog post she did where she was like basically saying she got to a point where she's like, I'm only posting when I feel called to basically, essentially. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to check myself now when I feel like I'm re wanting validation through this. And I think the same applies to witchcraft because I can definitely attest to that where I'm like, as I was saying earlier, am I posting because I want likes on this and I want engagement? Mm -hmm. Um, am I posting because I feel like I'm going to get buried in the algorithm because it's been, oh God, a week since I've posted, mm -hmm. um, you know? So. And we were talking about how that's, that kind of goes across the board mm -hmm. with art artists mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like the story aspect and that's on multiple platforms mm -hmm. is also a form of like constant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm too so one has to ask the exact same questions for that as well yeah mm -hmm. i don't know i think that it puts a lot of pressure on the illusion of what life is mm -hmm. you're just like moments or like a seconds mm -hmm. but people mm -hmm. feel like i literally went to someone's house the other day and they were like i had no idea who they were no fucking clue i just wanted to buy something like you know on facebook marketplace mm -hmm. and they were like telling me about my son and like they were on my Facebook and they're like, we're Facebook friends. And I was like, are we? I have no idea who you are. You know what I mean? Oof. And it's like this idea of when it comes to validation, we used to be in each other's lives, neighbors, friends, consistently mm -hmm. more as a community and group. I think we are now. Mm -hmm. So the idea of validation just in the reality of every single day is being funneled through social media. Mm -hmm. instead of being real life interactions mm -hmm. um, we have to make a conscious effort to make those real life interactions and they are so hard because we are overwhelmed with anxiety i assume because of social media so mm -hmm. it's this There's constant pressure. cycle of mm -hmm. this strange paradigm that we're in right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um we need to get more connected i think that's been like an underlying in theme life. in every <laughs> like even in the past episode and the one before that, I love what Co said where she was like saying, we often kind of like separate the two of like nature and us, but like we are nature and we need to get back to being genuinely authentically connected. And I think that's going to continue to be an underlying theme in every episode. Um, like for this one, when you are buying from mineral shows and stuff, be connected think how you would feel if you were a seven-year-old mining for fucking jade stone and you were like getting addicted to heroin or whatever yes. the, like think of these Girl. things True. feel put yourself in those shoes and then ask yourself am i gonna buy this from my store to sell and and mm. profit off of um because i think as long as we're disconnected we're not gonna ask those questions we're not gonna be introspective self-reflecting um mindful at all but i don't want to cry it's fine <laughs> it's like yes i'm just, just like brooklyn me... you just laid it down that it was just... so much honesty like that is so much truth but i have to check myself too oh, we all you do. know like well, I, none I, of us are yeah i don't want to checking ourselves i don't want to pick because like that's something i was talking to matt about just really quick like with our music stuff and making merch i couldn't find fucking t-shirts mm. that i knew were like ethically sourced and vegan because i'm vegan vegetarian and i've fallen off a few times but i do feel like if we are going to talk about that we do need to talk about our if we're going to talk about palo santo and sage to an extent we should talk about how we treat animals i know there's a circle of life but mass manufacturing of anything is not eco-friendly at all it's not good for our environment it's also like abusive and and um inhumane how we treat a lot of animals how we treat a lot of um plants and herbs crystals whatever people so mm -hmm. i'm just at a point now where i'm and it's it's hard i'm i think i'm starting to see what you're going what you went through with atl craft because there were moments i'll be honest in my head where i was like well, I mean, but it's cheaper to get these shirts and like I can, I'll just, I'll get a heating press myself and I'll print them myself. And 
da, 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 da. and I was like, and I had to catch myself. And I was like, Brooklyn, you're you're doing it. You're doing what you don't like, which is settling for something that is not humane, so you can make a profit. And you haven't even gone the steps to do it, but you're like these thoughts are like you're allowing them to seep through the cracks, and it's hard. So I, in a way feel for what you went through and what other metaphysical shops probably go through where you're like, but uh, oh, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's oh, absolutely. It's so hard. So I'm definitely not pointing fingers. Whoever's watching. Oh, no, I'm no just one, like, I don't think anybody thinks that. Yeah. Think. Oh shit. Sorry. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. But anyway, sorry. I, welcome <laughs> to my Ted talk. <laughs> it, do you have any? <laughs> No, I mean, I I'm felt like that sorry. was so insightful. Mm -hmm. We need to be more honest and truthful with ourselves. The inner voice that I hear you talking about, that mm -hmm. you hear, it, it's conditioned to our capitalistic, patriarchal, racist, sexist, horrific society that we've grown up in. But we, as we know, our generation has the power to change that. And what it takes is listening to that voice and then saying, Yes or no. Mm -hmm. You know, being aware that voice is happening instead of ignoring that voice. Because I feel like so many people do. Mm -hmm. Let me just like, oh, I'll just like ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. Just keep doing, just keep doing. Which is what I started to do. I was like, oh, is it making me any stranger? And then I was like, oh, girl, you're doing it. You're doing what you don't like. Mm -hmm. It's the echo of the shadow self, mm -hmm. essentially. Still haven't found an ethically sourced t-shirt. <laughs> so let me know if you find one. <laughs> I'm about to just we give up find on you it. One. So, we'll find like, you one. I think I found a place actually, so I'll <gasps> give you the link. Yeah, to that please place. do. Yeah, it'll oh, happen. Cool. I mean, happen. Yeah. Of, like they're vegan. They want to make sure like they're not doing sweatshop labor. Like it's all eco-friendly dresses and all that too. Yeah, yeah I'm send sending me the that. Link. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whatever. I give up. We, it's not resources there. Resources are out there. Mm -hmm. Well, and so that's a good point to tell uh, to to bring home is that like if you are an owner of a shop or service or whatever don't give up when you are trying to take the initiative now to correct that don't 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 give up like that okay well there's because i think sometimes you can get overwhelmed with all this information and be like well shit i could just i guess i gotta like just give up on it because there's just no hope but like i almost did that and now you're just explaining like no there is like there are resources that you can utilize and i so i would like to think for crystal and oh, yeah. whatever it's out there, it's out there. Just, you just have to work try a harder. yeah you yeah. just have to ask put in the work like yeah you, you have saying. to put in the work put in the work and make the connections i think a lot of it has to do with interaction with other people mm -hmm. and like i was saying like we have this. so much anxiety about it we do. We're we're so isolated mm -hmm. uh, for strange, like I said, paradigm that we're in. Mm -hmm. But we've got to make the effort to just connect with one another. You know, mm -hmm. Absolutely. for sure. Any closing statements, guest? <laughs> Since I like dog the whole conversation. No, it was so good to <laughs> no, hear your voice. Some really wonderful point. Yeah. yeah. And worries. Um, I guess my final note would be: don't be afraid of recognizing where you can be problematic and where mm. things that do appeal to your purpose may be a problem for others. Mm -hmm. Just because you're problematic or just because you have something problematic, everyone is, me, you, everyone. I don't know anybody of like 7.6 billion people who's just like, yeah, I'm fucking perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Are you concerned? <laughs> <laughs> Red flag, walk away. <laughs> just, just the entire like... Um, inverted like japan flag of and then just blink out the white part that that is what that is yeah. just all red <laughs> uh, yeah. so just because you um have things that could be problematic or are problematic doesn't mean you aren't in full permission and full privilege to create a solution that works for you and for other people it just might be a little bit more work but it also gets to be something that you learn and grow with you don't have to be perfect in order to grow like that's literally the whole point of growing mm -hmm. you progress and in progress you're perfect so be able to own your progressing mm -hmm. and you like are mm -hmm. worthy of love while you're doing it exactly the like when you're when you're not when you're like going through it 
when you're changing and growing and trying to figure out, like, you are also worthy of love during that time. Mm-hmm. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. The, that's really the love in it of just like, okay, I'm not perfect. Who says I have to be? Mm-hmm. And do I feel like I have to be? Okay. Let me give myself permission to not be. That's love. Give yourself permission to be problematic and figure out your solutions. That's right for you. Yeah, because a lot of us learn through experience. Like, I know that I learn the hard way every fucking time. So sometimes for for us, (laughs) (laughs) but sometimes for us, that means that we're going to have little spurts of problematic things we do because we're figuring it out. Like you were I like that you say, don't be afraid to be like when you are working through it problematic like that's just gonna ha- it's the natural evolution we've like always had our little grooves but we come back and we grow and we evolve and that's okay it's all right okay <laughs> i watch too much cardi <laughs> <laughs> no like i can talk about problems <laughs> talk about problematic I would say too, like try to think of things less they them us them and think of things more collectively you know like when it comes to capitalism, there's this obvious 1% and 99%. And it's like, we need to work together um, as one living, breathing organism. If the ocean is poisoned, we're poisoned. If the environment is you know, suffering, we will suffer innately. We are part of it. We are reflections of one another. And we have to think of things more communally. Mm-hmm. If we have brothers, sisters, children, family members that we feel protective of, siblings, maybe, um, if we knew that they were seven years old working in a mine, like if we saw them as ours, that's my brother, that's my sister, that's my child, we would shop for crystals differently. Mm hmm. So we need to look at everyone like that. Agreed. Mm-hmm. A thousand percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, especially, <laughs> well, and now I'm like even putting it, not to take it to a heavy place, but like I, now that I like know you and Woody, I, when I read that, like I thought of my little brothers and I thought of Woody and I was like, all right, we're done. Like, yeah, it would, no. Mm-hmm. So we're both tearing up now. It's fine. <laughs> well, I mean, no, I think it's a good. But we think about that, and I won't go too far. But like when we, when I think of like the, our immigration issues, when I think about Brexit, it's like we're all like these are our people. They're our people. They're all our people. They're all of all it's not our us people. And them. It's not mm-hmm. us and them. Like that child is your child. That is your child. Or that is your child. The scandal with detention camps of literally treating. Ch- oh god. Like, that breaks my heart. But all of it mm-hmm. is relevant yeah. to mm-hmm. our consumerism. It is. Yeah. It is. Um, they do correlate. Absolutely. They definitely correlate. Not to try to take it to a deep and dark place. <laughs> <laughs> but we there, so. <laughs> we there. And fade out. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have a good day. <laughs> Um, but next time we'll talk about something like, Sabrina. yeah, we don't know. We should, we should that just start came our out. pop culture. Yes. I just finished watching it. it ah, I like, you, it. Fucking, you went through it. Damn. Yeah. Cause I was going to binge it I tonight. just started the first episode. I started it yesterday. Cause like Friday's my Damn, off day. You did it. Yeah. So mm. uh, like I saw it Friday morning. I'm like, all right, let's start. And so then like watch the last two this morning. Next time. Then we <laughs> should do Sabrina. So. Because yeah. so I have what, How many? We've done three. Yeah, mm-hmm. we definitely just need to do time to get light. Yeah. yeah, time to get light. Hey, y'all. Brooklyn here. Uh, just wanted to uh, say a quick thank you to Danny for being part of this conversation. Hope I didn't hog it too much. Um, I just had to make a lot of cuts towards the end because it was getting a little long. So we kind of did lose a little bit of that natural ebb and flow of the end of all of our conversations. But um, I didn't want to end it without saying thank you, Danny, on behalf of Witch Mama and I for being part of this conversation.